ecosystem services are the benefits that people get from the environment. But it's about more than that. It's about appreciating and valuing all the things that the environment does for us freely. It's very important for both private and public institutions to take into account ecosystem services because human well-being depends on it. There are four main types of ecosystem services. Um, the first is provisioning, which are the things that we get directly from our environment. So these are things like food and fuel and fiber um, and animal feed and pharmaceuticals. The second type are cultural ecosystem services. So these are the non-material things that we get. Um, they are things like recreation and enjoying the outdoors and um, different cultural things like our cultural identity. Um, those are the second type of ecosystem services. Um, the third is um, regulating ecosystem services. So those are things like pollination and climate regulation. These are um, aspects of the environment that it controls itself. So um, rainfall and water quality, um, the regulating environmental services. And the fourth type are supporting ecosystem services. So these are things that we don't directly use, but they do support the other ecosystem services that we use. So for example, soil formation isn't something that we need directly, but it supports provisioning services like growing food and getting fuel. Ecosystem services are absolutely vital to our well-being. And I'm not talking about just the feeling you get when, a when you watch a sunset. Some of our core human needs are related to ecosystem services, like, the, like resource security uh, and shelter and food security. Um, these are things that we absolutely need. One of our most important ecosystems um, is the mastic forest, which is an area of dry forest. And this is one of our first habitats. It's one of our primary habitats in Cayman. And it existed long before nearly anything else in Cayman. And um, the mastic forest itself provides ecosystem services such as carbon storage, and it provides pl flood protection, and has a really high um, degree of biodiversity. So there are lots of endemic plants and animals that live there. And um, it also provides forest trails. So walking through the mastic um, trail is one of the few things that you can do in Cayman in the shade. And some of the forest trails there have been really important to our heritage. And our marine resources are another extremely important ecosystem. Um, we get coastal protection because of the reefs and the mangroves and the seagrass beds. Um, we get fishing resources from our reefs and our marine ecosystems. Um, there are different ways that the marine resources contribute to tourism. Um, our marine resources are absolutely vital. So why, when our ecosystem services are so important, um, why do people make decisions to undermine them? Um, one of the main reasons is that people don't tend to understand them. Maybe they don't have an appreciation of the different ways that our environment contributes to our well-being. But another reason is that they just believe that the environment is eternal and we will always have the gifts that the environment gives us. We will always have fish in the ocean. We will always have clean air. Um, but the main reason why people undermine ecosystem services is that we just do not value them the way we value other things. Um, regulating and supporting services are particularly undervalued. The national conservation law is the main law which regulates um, how people affect ecosystem services and it does a good job but until we value ecosystem services as much as they deserve, um, they will go consistently undermined. So ecosystems are so important, but how do we get decision makers um, to consider, consider them along with all the other uh, things that they need to consider, like how our family is going to put food on the table? So the main way of doing this is through ecosystem valuation, um, which is a way that you can assign a dollar value to ecosystem services. 
There are five main ways that you can get values for ecosystem services. So the first way is a direct value. So that's the price you might pay to use something. The second way is an indirect value, which is where you might pay to use something that uses the thing that you're valuing. And both of those types are called use values. The second type are non-use values. These include things like existence value. So how much is it worth to you for something to exist? Take the polar bears, for example. That's something that has a existence value um, because we all feel good when we think about polar bears and them living. Um, then the fourth type is um, bequeathed value. So that is the value that you would pay to give something to your children. So how much would you pay for them to have something that you had as a kid? And those two types are called non-use values. And the fifth type of value is similar to financial markets. So that is an option value. How much would you pay to have the option of using something in the future? One great way that ecosystem valuation has come into how the Department of Environment puts forward their proposals um, was the valuation of the marine resources in Cayman. So the Department of Environment commissioned a study which looked at the, the total economic valuation of marine resources in Cayman and looked at how they would benefit from expanding the marine parks area. Um, so that looked at different aspects such as tourism, how much is the tourism, um, what's the tourism value to the Cayman Islands, and they also looked at the willingness to pay of tourists um, for the natural environment. So how much would a tourist pay extra if they knew that the marine resources would be conserved? And they also looked at, which I think is really interesting, they looked at how house prices are affected by their distance to marine resources. And they found that houses near to mangroves are worth 5% more. Um, so that's an ecosystem service which is related to its amenity value. Uh, they also looked at ecosystem services um, from the marine environment from carbon storage um, in the mangroves and in the seagrass beds. Um, they looked at the um, fishing value, so they looked at how much fish is being caught in Cayman, and they, you know how much an individual fish you might pay for it, so you can get a total economic value for fishing in Cayman. Um, and they looked at all these different values to come up with a total economic value for marine resources. Once they knew how much the marine resources were worth to Cayman, then they compared a scenario with expanded marine park areas. And they did a study where they looked at a 25-year um, period because when we make marine, when we expand the marine parks, there's going to be some lag time while those ecosystems get back into their full form like the rest of our marine parks. And so they looked at a 25-year period and found that on the 25-year mark, our expanded marine parks would contribute $8 million to our economy um, through the increased value of expanding those parks. The best thing that the rest of us can do is take a moment to appreciate all the benefits that the environment gives you. Take a second to look at the trees and breathe in the air and really appreciate that these things come from nature and that they're not infinite. Um, so when your politicians and when decision makers are making decisions about the environment, um, you will have a better appreciation of how they might be affected by those decisions. The straightforward explanation of ecosystem services is that they are the benefits that people get from the environment. But it's about more than just a transaction. It's about the many varied benefits that the environment freely gives to us from properly functioning ecosystems.